the red mist swarming around you begins to dissipate. You begin to see shadows, silhouettes moving around you. You think you hear people calling out, but they're not calling out. That's voices choking. Last moments of breath. <gasps> you find as the mist falls on the inner circle, Lord Dunn is walking out of the circle with the four-edged blade in his hand and you find yourself, Reverend Priddo, standing before Thomas Priddo, standing before Charlotte Lambert, standing before Emily Dunn, standing before Anastasia Priddo and standing before Tobias Hawthorne. Reverend, what is it that you do as you see these silhouettes before you? The Reverend is somewhat shocked. The mist has gone. What little belief he had that something was going to happen doesn't really equate to what he's actually seeing now. He'll actually take a handkerchief and probably cover his face. The sight of, well, the carnage that is in uh, front of him. He's probably looking at some kind of Romanesque biblical massacre and he is just fixed to the spot. He doesn't know quite what what to do. This is some grand ruse or some plan that he has been part of and I think he's just going to have to take a moment to collect his thoughts and think what is going on? What is he to do? Reverend, can you give me a spot hidden? Just as you're there, just as the, the red mist is dissipating around you. In fact, uh, a, a spot hidden from everybody, please. And as we come to you, we'll find out what you roll. Reverend. The Reverend is a little bit taken aback by the scene. That's a failure of uh, 48 versus 53. Mm, Reverend, as you look across the individuals in your immediate vicinity, you see the silhouettes. You recognize where people are standing. People's right hands are still being held out, having just been marked by the blade of Lord Dunn. And you look and you see Thomas beside you. You see Charlotte, Emily Dunn, you see Tobias. Anastasia's silhouette is gone. It's faded. Reverend looks at Thomas and for once he doesn't have any kind of look of authority when he looks at Thomas. He is just a man looking at another man in this quite remarkable situation. But then he collects himself and just looks but can't bring himself to speak right now. Thomas, you're standing next to the Reverend. You see the Reverend looking at you. This 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 man who's usually holds court within a chapel, but right now he can't find his words. You see the same thing. Can I ask you your role, please, Thomas? Thomas, obviously a bit blinded by the mist, but managed just about to regain some clarity of vision with a 49 under 50. Thomas, as the red mist swirled around you and you saw it shoot out of the window and down the side of the cliff, down into Kingscombe. But now, looking back at the group, seeing the red mist descend, you see the occasional silhouette of those things, those creatures, those horrific monstrosities with their head ripped and broken open with the metal rods inside. Well, you see the last few of them disappearing through the red mist and they literally disappear to you, Thomas. But you see the one that had Anastasia's right arm holding her hand up and as it disappears, it takes Anastasia with it. Thomas is currently in not much of a fit state after withdrawing from the red jelly, having no real rest, having been harangued by Cosgrove, having been bled by a, a fish thing with spikes in his head. But I think that, that family pride, that family duty, Thomas is going to try and stumble forwards to, to, to where Anastasia was and into the red mist that is dissipating. Okay, you stumble forward and you find before you as you bump into the, the, the figure that you think to be there, but Miss Lambert, Thomas comes over to you. You feel his hand reaching out and he, he almost grabs you by the wrist and then you catch his eye. What do you do, Miss Lambert? Charlotte is feeling very disorientated at this point. She uh, 
she doesn't know what's just happened. She's had a massive revelation about the fact that she is actually a dumb and not a Prido or indeed a Lambert, really. Uh, and I think seeing Thomas, it's a normality. It, it's it's one thing that she can recognize at least. So she's probably never been more glad to see him in her whole life, I would imagine. And uh, she reaches out with the hand which isn't bleeding and tries to catch hold of him. And what was your spot hidden roll? Uh, that was a failure, unfortunately. That was 53 against 44. You reach out with your cut hand and it's Thomas. He's there. He's right in front of you. You've just found out everything that's happened. But at the same time, this horrific, insane event seems to have come to its conclusion. Thomas, Charlotte, you found yourselves together. Anastasia. An- no, no, it's me. It, it is Charlotte. Uh, Miss Lambert, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, but, but have you seen my sister? She, she was just here. She's, she's gone. What? They've, they've gone? got her. The, the, the things, the, the monsters, those damned monsters have got her. Wait, wait. Are, are, you, are you sure? I, I just, do, do, you, do you doubt my eyes, ma'am? I saw them disappear into the mist. With her? With her, yes. <sighs> well, then we have to find her. We, we, we have to go after her. I, 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 I concur, a- absolutely. Do, do you, as much as I'm ashamed to say it, you know my sister better than I. Has she so shown any inclination of joining with these things, with consorting with these things these things I, I i have no idea what these things even are I, I i mean i haven't seen her for a few days i i've been here at, at dun manor but in that case anastasia would never have kept anything like that from me we we tell each other everything you hear they don't, over not recently <laughs> over the background of your conversation you now hear tobias hawthorne uh, just turning around almost on the spot turning and turning just calling out Anastasia's name. Just Anastasia, uh, uh, L- Lady Prudo, uh, Anastasia, Anastasia, and he just seems to be just crossing the dance floor from one side to the other. Th- there is nothing now on the dance floor that you see except yourselves and a number of masked bodies. It appears that every other member of this entire gathering. Everybody else who was invited here, except your wonderful host, the Duns, and the wonderful Hawthorns, uh, you can also uh, see, well, we'll see. Depending on your spot hidden roll will depend what you see. But the majority of those that were here, and especially those that were dancing in their rabbit's masks, they lie on the floor in their dancing partners, and they are torn open by each other. It is a sight to behold. Lord Cosgrove, Mm -hmm. you have come out to find quite a horrific situation, but at the same time, one of the first people you clock eyes on, Lord Cosgrove, is Thomas Prido. Yes. I, I... Can I, can I ask, sorry, what mm. your spot hidden roll was? I got a hard success. Okay, well then, Lord Cosgrave, <laughs> you see Thomas, and he is the first person you clock eyes on, but you see the others in that group. But you also see, up on the balcony, Lady Hawthorne, Lord Hawthorne, Lady Dunn, and behind those you see a, uh, a figure, a, um, d- d- well... A reverend, a religious figure, you surmise, from the way he's dressed. And out of everybody up on the balcony, with your hard success, I'd say that you can see that the uh, the religious figure seems rather upset by the events. I think I'm going to ignore young Lord Prido for the moment and try to find a way of getting up to the balcony. Absolutely. You can step over a number of bodies and you oh, can yes. find your way uh, along the viewing area and up to the balcony. And within a moment, you hear down on the dance floor, someone's shouting out for someone called Anastasia. You can hear almost because it's so quiet. It's so silent now. The music has stopped. 
the celebration has stopped. You can still see that there's a number of servants of the Dun Manor colours standing around uh, the peripherals, but everything seems so vacuous, empty. But you make your way up onto the balcony and you are there with the lords and the ladies who are hosting the event. Yes, I think Cosgrove has probably got one of his hands in his pocket just trying to conceal what is probably a bit of a tremble in it. And instead is drawing himself up to his full height and walking over towards Lord Hawthorne. Hawthorne, old chap, I don't want to sound churlish, but I do believe you didn't quite tell me all the festivities you had planned this evening. (laughs) Cosgrove, I'm not one for spoiling surprises. And especially if we are going to, and I don't want to sully this evening, but if we are going to, shall we say, spark an arrangement? I don't say business, it's not really our style, but I wanted you to know how serious I was. Oh, I believe that message has been received. But at the same time, I am somewhat concerned that if... My role in this enterprise is to try to help you develop stronger business relationships and financial relationships with some of um, your peers and the people within this community. That would be a lot easier if you didn't go around killing them all. (laughs) I very much agree, Cosgrave, but... As they say, you can't make an omelette without killing half of the people at the dance. So, what I think I need you to understand, Cosgrove, is... Tonight, it's a one-off. Blowing off a bit of steam. Setting up a bit of a... Should we say... Well, I think we can talk quite candidly now, Cosgrove, considering you've survived this evening's events. There's a little gathering. Some would call it a ritual. Uh, that we're building up to. Now, once that ritual has taken place, I will be in a position to make others, as we said, your friends, see the way I see. Think the way I think. And it's very important to me, Cosgrove, that as we expand beyond Kingscombe, as we move towards London, and beyond, that I have the right people thinking the right thing at the right time. And I know you have those people, Cosgrove, in your pocket. So, very important for me that you're on side and you will grant access for me to said people. Now, obviously, Cosgrove, there are rewards, boons and benefits for being friends to the Hawthorns and and the Duns. We are friends, aren't we, Cosgrove? I wouldn't have it any other way. Excellent, excellent. Lady Hawthorne, you are standing next to your husband, possibly arm in arm, listening to this conversation. You... Well, uh, can I ask what your spot hidden roll was, please? Ah, that's an extreme success. That's 13 over 68. Okay, so, Lady Hawthorne, I'm going to uh, reveal a, f- uh, a couple of uh, things. Uh, well, firstly, you can see down onto the balcony before uh, Lord Cosgrove uh, came up from the balcony down to the dance floor. You could very much see uh, your son and the members of the Prido family plus Miss Lambert and uh, Miss Emily Dunn. Um, you also saw that... Miss Anastasia Prido disappeared in the mists with these, well, monstrosities. But that was to be expected, Lady Hawthorne. You were well aware of that. Up on the balcony is yourself, Lady Louisa Dunn. Lord Dunn has now arrived with Lord Cosgrove. Your husband is standing there as tall and proud as ever. But it's the Reverend, Reverend Giles Marsh, who you're now seeing for the first time looking, looking at Lord Hawthorne, looking at your husband. It's 
I'm going to ask you for a psychology roll as well. Oh, heaven. Lady Hawthorne. Oh, that's, a, that's just a regular success. That's 60 over 78. Well, Lady Hawthorne, you are able to see that the Reverend is not only scared, but he is upset. I think it's fair to say you can even detect that there's anger there as well. Right, well, Lady Hawthorne is going to nod very politely to Lord Cosgrove, but the gentlemen are talking business. This is really, you know, well, slightly inappropriate, but she's not exactly about to argue with her husband over over this, uh, particularly not in front of a guest. So um, I'm, she's just going to take the Reverend Marsh to one side, um, possibly out onto the uh, terrace, uh, and have a quiet word with him. Uh, I... I, I... I wasn't expecting everything to happen in, in in that way, Lady Hawthorne. Was it not clear what um, was going to happen? You you agreed to this plan. You partook of it willingly, Reverend. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And as as the as the figurehead of the church, I I um, knew we were um, making praise and worship of of uh, the incipient Lord. Uh, I, I knew we were praising and worship and 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 praying to uh, Dithogua. Of course, of course. I it it seems um, that we we've put uh, our Lord in a rather vulnerable position. I, 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 I fear and please, I am speaking out of turn, and I know I'm speaking out of turn, but you have to forgive my at the situation and everybody um, being dead. Um, it appears that your husband wants something other than worship for the incipient lord. I, I, I have sworn to worship. I, I have. I, I'm worried. Tell me your fears, Reverend. Tell me your your actual fears. What is it that you fear my husband wants? I. Uh, the ritual this evening, and I have studied these rituals with your husband time and time again, and we have many more at the church, and I just, I fear that perhaps your loving, caring husband, who has done so much for this community, wishes to use our unborn Lord for his own purposes listening to him speak to Lord Cosgrove I I fear I fear for the safety of Dithogua your fears whilst understandable are I'm I'm sure unfounded reverend um you you know my husband is a pious man a, um, a devout man um, who has only the, the best interests of the incipient Lord at heart. Um, merely that which he speaks of, I'm sure we could equate to uh, the proselytizing of the Christian church, spreading the word, spreading the faith. Um, my husband, as you know, is, is a powerful and forbidding, forbidding man. Um, and he um, may be a little blunt and a little forthright at times, but... I'm sure, I'm sure that he he intends no harm to the incipient lord. He he may just be permitting his his zeal um, to um, carry him forward, perhaps a little more quickly than you are comfortable with. But surely, surely, as the I wouldn't quite have said figurehead. I would have said embodiment of our worship here in Kingscombe, and um, that that you would welcome chance to proselytize beyond things come to, to spread the faith what do we think that is is that a persuade role is that a charm role what are we thinking lynn what's that what <laughs> let me that? check what my stats are. <laughs> see which one's best <laughs> oh um i think that's probably a charm role okay let's do this oh dear <laughs> no, that's that's a fail. That's a ninety-eight over seventy-five. Unfortunately, um, okay, a charm has momentarily escaped her. 
Well, we're going to let your psychology ride for a little bit longer, I think. And then as you attempt to quash uh, Reverend Giles Marsh's fears in terms of uh, Lord Hawth- uh, in terms of Lord Hawthorne's intentions and what you've offered there as a reason why, you can see that the the Reverend Giles Marsh nods. Uh, yes, okay, um, very good. Uh, thank you, Lady Hawthorne. I will um, return to the church and pray for our Lord and their safety. I'm going to very gently take his hands, looking straight in the eye, and say, I am sure we can rely on your continuing support, Reverend. Yes, yes, absolutely. I, I will do everything that is required of me as a servant of our Lord. Yes. I would expect nothing less. You can see with that psychology role, that success that's carried past the charm, you can see that there is a sense of fear. There is a sense of the Reverend is not fully convinced that Lord Hawthorne or you or anyone else who's standing up on that balcony at the moment has good intentions towards his god and oh man oh man we shall have to think of ways to uh to convince him otherwise i think i think that but, would be but most i think he needs to go back to his church and have a quiet contemplate for a That's moment exactly what he does he begins to uh to to walk out of the door but as he begins to walk uh out of the door um you all every single one of you hear a bellowing voice and in such an empty almost cathedral like environment now because all of the movement the music the well frivolities have finished you find yourself in a room or should i say tomb of the rabbit's ball and you hear lord hawthorne who steps to the front of the balcony and begins speaking assuming that everybody listens to him Welcome to the dreamland of the incipient god, Dithogua. You are now welcome to leave Dun Manor and return home to Prido Manor, that is, or wherever it is that you belong, not the other place that you pretend to call home, Hampshire, I believe. You see, especially you, Lord Cosgrove, who are standing next to Hawthorne, you see him turn Mm. to the nearest servant. And then you see him point to some of the bodies on the floor. Get these things out of here. Back where they should be. Not in here. Not now. And then he turns wider to the group. You see, we no longer need to charm you into staying in Kingscombe. And it appears that he's addressing directly towards the Priddos. As of now, you simply cannot leave. And he holds up his right hand and just taps his palm. We are all safely contained within the dream of the incipient god, Dithogua, merged with our very own town. Until the spring equinox, in seven days' time, where we will birth our lord into the world and take from it what is rightfully ours, you are trapped. You may go wherever you desire. You may go wherever you desire. And he kind of gives you this cue as in to leave. Thomas Priddo, what do you do? Keeper, can I see Cosgrove standing next to Hawthorne? (laughs) Without doubt, Cosgrove is standing shoulder to shoulder with Hawthorne in this moment. Ah, Yes, you can. tis Tis as I feared. I know men like Hawthorne. I know that they love to show their power, that they hold the power. And that is exactly what he's doing right now. He the, the tapping of the hand, the inviting us to leave when he knows that we, we sure as hell can't leave the town. So I'm going to do the one thing that he doesn't want us to do. I'm going to ignore him. I'm going to ignore Hawthorne completely. But I'm going to look up. And I'm going to look directly square at Cosgrove standing next. And I'm going to shout up to Cosgrove, this, this new... This rage that is building up in Thomas, <laughs> this 
small, slightly short man, sweating with withdrawal symptoms, blooded in one hand, probably tattered clothing, soaked in sea mist. It's, it is not a particularly... It's quite a pathetic sight, to be fair. But this pathetic sight is going to look up at Cosgrove and say, So I see you've thrown your lot in with this lot. I have to say, Cosgrove, I thought you had better taste than this. Well, if this truly is what the way that you want it to end, I'm sure we will meet again at the card tables or maybe another field, depending on how you want to play this. But may I just say, Cosgrove, you're making a mistake. There's nothing for you here in Kingscombe. Nothing for you in Kingscombe. And uh, Thomas is going to turn away. Uh, yeah, I don't think Cosgrove is going to bother responding to that. Well, he, he, I, I think the best that you'll get out of him at the moment is uh, something of a smug smile that, yeah, if you've got any skill in psychology, you can probably see is almost exactly, almost entirely put on. Oh, well, Thomas has ten in psychology, so he thinks <laughs> it's obviously very sincere. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Lord Hawthorne witnesses this. He sees this exchange between the two of you. Hawthorne does turn to you, Lord Cosgrove, and looks at you as this this churlish rapscallion calls you out in front of him, in front of Lady Hawthorne, the Duns. Ah, Lord Hawthorne, do not mistake my silence for meekness. I can see at the moment the young lord is not in his right mind, and I fear that riling him up further will just lead to scenes of unpleasantness. Rest assured that the matter will be dealt with. I hope so, Lord Cosgrove. As I've mentioned, we have a future together, but... Oh, indeed. There are those, like... That young, foolish man down there who can be moulded into society. I would much prefer to work with you, but if that's not a reality, he would be your unfortunate successor. I think you place entirely too much faith in his abilities. Can I hear this, Keeper? Uh, give me a listen roll. So it's not a shout-out conversation, but absolutely give me a listen roll. Yeah, well, it's not a shout out conversation, but I can't imagine the Cosgrove speaking voice is particularly quiet. Uh, <laughs> I have a listen of 20, and that was a 99. That is a fumble. <laughs> um, then what happens, Thomas, as Lord Cosgrove uh, says... In fact, I'm going to give you a situation, Thomas, and then you'd like to explain to me what your fumble is there. As Lord, as Lord Cosgrove says the words... Uh, don't put too much faith in him. I'm assuming you're walking across a dance floor of bodies and blood. What happens, Thomas? Uh, Thomas is going to hear something, Cosgrove say something, just just on the edge of that hearing. And in a moment, he's going to turn around, try and twist around to see exactly what he heard. Unfortunately, his foot slips on a pool of blood and the legs come up from underneath him and you just hear a thud as he falls on his posterior. Lying his head backwards, he sees Cosgrove and Hawthorne looking down at him. And, and I think that the, the blood's going to boil in him. This is, this is indignity. I mean, he's a man of reputation like this, and he's... In fact, to be fair, I'm going to throw you this here. Is this a reputation role, if I'm making a fool of myself? Oh, 100%. Blooded... This is a reputation role, absolutely. Fantastic. Regardless of, of who, the majority everyone's of... dead. Yeah, ex <laughs> well... <laughs> You've still got uh, the ruling families of Kingscombe watching. In front of who? I dipped it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? That is thankfully a success, a 25 under 55. I think the fact that you fall gracefully and such pity is taken upon you uh, for such a horrific moment. And as you fall and you land in the blood and there is a slap and a splat and everybody's eyes are drawn to you, you see Cosgrove and Hawthorne's heads turn to you. And you hear Hawthorne just say, Yes, quite a lot of moulding. Mm. Well, if you won't leave, you can help the servants. If you wouldn't mind, I'd like to take you for a walk. 
Lord Hawthorne turns to Lady Hawthorne, uh, Lady Dunn, Lord Dunn, and Lord Cosgrove, and gestures with his arm to follow him as they begin to leave. Where are they headed? You don't know, Reverend Prudo. But Reverend... No, I haven't been included. What do you do? You are <laughs> well, left... The Reverend wanted to say cheerio to his host, but obviously it's scarpering before oh, you <laughs> say, cheerio, thanks for a nice evening. So, uh... You're welcome to no. shout out or try and catch them up. Well, he was going to give him a round of applause at the end of such a rousing, rousing speech, but somebody in the crowd shouted out. But no, <laughs> um, the the Reverend finally um, sees the movement, and in a daze, he'll just walk past Charlotte and say, uh, "Charlotte, would you be a dear and find Anastasia? I'm just going to say goodbye, and then walk possibly up." to the balcony, whether they're coming down or whether they're, they're going up, and try and, if, if he's not too late, go to uh, Hawthorne. Uh, yeah, you can probably catch them on their way out. You can see that Reverend Giles Marsh is uh, standing at the door to the exit, and you can see that the uh, the collective group are very much on their way, um, about to leave. But if you wanted to um, catch Lord Hawthorne quickly before they go, you can. How do you mm. catch his attention? He'll probably just be making a straight beeline so you can't miss this just haunted figure moving through the bodies towards them. Reverend, is there something that you want? He just uh, puts his hand out, says, uh, and uh, hopefully he'll shake it out. Hello, party. Yes, quite, quite the party. Wasn't quite what I was expecting, but uh, put on a good, good show, old chap. Uh, Lord, Lady Dunn, uh, dinner, dinner tomorrow. Give me a luck roll here, Ooh. please, Reverend Prado. Come on, come on. Lady, Lady Hawthorne is just going to very sympathetically pat his arm while he's bimbling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is a success. Thirty versus forty-four. Then I'm going to allow you in your day state to decide which hand you proffer. <laughs> well, he's dominant right hand, so if my his your right, right hand, hand was... currently has a significant uh, uh, cut uh, in a certain symbol upon the hand, um, which you're very welcome to use. Well, he he'll just naturally go go, go for the <laughs> right right hand. And what's disturbing to you in this moment? And the the the, the luck is. No one objects to it. You proffer your right hand. You shake Lord Hawthorne's hand. He shakes your hand. And you feel in that moment, that's when you feel the incision again, the reminder of what's happened with Lord Dunn. You shake Lord Dunn's hand. And then you look at it and you can see the blood still dripping. You can see there is now blood on both of their hands. And they don't flinch. They don't wipe it off in disgust. And when you say to Lady Dunn about, was it lunch tomorrow, dinner? She nods. Oh, very good, Reverend. Um, it'd be lovely to talk some more. You, I, I do so much enjoy telling you about everything that's going on. So, yeah, I would absolutely love to. Um, Lady Hawthorne, would you be agreeable to have lunch with the Reverend and I? Well, of course, if the Reverend would care to invite me, I'd be more than happy to. A Reverend? Uh, it, would, it would be my pleasure, of, of course, Lady Hawthorne, if you, if you were available. Be... D delightful, yes. And delightful. would I be assuming at Prudo Manor? Why not? It, it is rather favourable this time of year, Lady Hawthorne, isn't it? Yes, yes it is. Um, and before she says she's going to reach into her reticule, pull out a very nice little um, lace handkerchief and just gently press it into the palm of his hand, saying absolutely nothing about it. And the, the Reverend uh, will, will look down and just close his hand and gently with, withdraw it. Uh, very well. Um, you, you have to excuse me. I, I, I seem to have lost Anastasia. Uh, uh, cheerio. Oh. Uh, don't, don't worry about your niece, Reverend. She'll be fine. She's, she's in good company. I, I do believe, though, that you have other family members who may require your attention. Oh, gosh, has Thomas been an idiot again? You, you have to forgive him. He's... I, I really don't know what to do with the boy sometimes. I mean, uh, 
I'm, I'm, I do apologise. Uh, I don't believe we've met. Uh, did I hear Cosgrove? Uh, Lord Hawthorne would step in then, because introductions are such an important factor of the society. Uh, mm-hmm. And Lord Hawthorne would just step in. Reverend Prudhoe, this is our dear friend, Lord Archibald Cosgrove. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, an absolute pleasure, Reverend. Absolute pleasure. C- good goodness, the Earl, Earl of Cosgrove? Indeed. Oh, uh, well, uh, I, I would shake your hand, but uh, I believe I'd I'd rather myself. you didn't, yes. No, 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 that, that, that is... Well, uh, uh, you have to excuse me. I, I really must get back to uh, young Master yeah. Thomas. He is quite a handful, isn't he? Uh, yes, uh, and, and I do believe that Miss Lambert would um, also... Reg- if you wouldn't mind reminding my son um, that uh, we are leaving that, I would also greatly appreciate that, Reverend. I, I am. I shall, of course. I am forever your servant. Uh, good night, and th- thank you again for your hospitality this evening. It was quite something. And he'll turn and walk walk away, probably still dripping, as he looks down <laughs> at his hand, slightly confused. But it, it, does he see uh, Tobias around? Uh, yeah, well, you can kind of see Tobias. Um, he, he's looking a little bit frantic uh, on the dance floor. Uh, he seems to have calmed down a little, um, but it, it, he seems uh, much more anxious than than the rest of you. Uh, and he stopped calling out Anastasia's name, but he is now going around almost to each of the couples and just rolling them over so he can see whose face it is um, before he moves on to the next and then looking to see their face and then moves on to the next to see their face. You oh, very uh, much Master get Master Tobias, sense. Tobias, don't, don't, don't get yourself messy. Uh, 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 Lady Hawthorne has asked me to tell you uh, they are they are leaving. Uh, if you right. wouldn't mind joining them. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, yes, of course, um, Reverend. Um, Were you looking for something? I, uh, Anastasia. Oh, oh uh, I believe uh, I can't remember what your my mother said. Uh, she said she's fine with 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 friends. Uh, but um, if if you'll excuse me, I've, I've got to get uh, Thomas. Uh, I don't think he's feeling uh, too too well. Reverend, are you? Are you all right? I don't... I, I don't know, Tobias. Am I? Um, I uh, have to go, um, <laughs> apparently. I have to go too? Yes. Uh, maybe you could escort your mother across to Predator Manor. T- tomorrow we can... Yes. I, I, I'm lost for, for words. Do, do excuse me, Tobias. Have a, have a good evening. And, uh, and thank your father again for a, a lovely evening. Uh, cheer, cheerio. Yes. Uh, thank you for for coming. Tobias steps over a body, uh, over a pool of blood, uh, over someone's intestines that have spilled from their stomach as you're talking about having a good evening and thank you for the invitation. And Tobias will reluctantly wake his way up to where his mother is. And then when he joins the uh, bigger group, they all leave together. You are alone. Rebel will uh, make his way over to uh, Charlotte and say... uh, uh, Miss L- Miss Lambert, I do, I do believe uh, Miss Anastasia has gone with friends. Uh, that's that's what I'm told. Uh, uh, could you we offer you a lift to? Uh, I mean, you'd be quite welcome to come over to Predo Manor if you've uh, well had had enough uh, fun uh, for, for this evening. Uh, would you care to join us? All right, are you, are you staying staying here, Dun Dun Manor? Charlotte has probably been doing much the same thing as Tobias has. She's been looking uh, amongst the bodies to see if she can see Anastasia. I I know that Thomas said that uh, he saw her go, but Charlotte doesn't know what to believe at this point. And uh, her lovely sea blue silk ball gown is uh, at this point ankle deep in blood, the train behind her. She's just dragging this heavy silk train of, of blood stained behind her and it's just leaving this thick trail of blood wherever she walks and uh, suddenly she feels like she wants to be back in Prideau Manor she's had such a wonderful time here in Dun Manor but for a moment she just really wants to be somewhere familiar the two people who mean the most to her in the whole world Philippe and Anastasia both of them are not here right now uh, with Philippe, she can kind of 
understand that because he seems to be coming and going these days. Mm. But then again, didn't he always? He was always unpredictable like that. But Anastasia, she's always been a known quantity. She she doesn't go. She doesn't vanish. And uh, she really wants to know what's happened to Anastasia. So I think recognizing that the Reverend is having some sort of fugue state <laughs> almost at this point, she gives him a very slight curtsy in the way that one might do on a ballroom floor and puts out her hand lightly to his arm, to rest on his arm, as if she's asking him to escort her to the carriage. The Reverend adjusts his wig and uh, makes sure that's on uh, straight as he uh, presents himself and uh, takes the lady uh, very uh, daintily towards the carriage. And uh, if uh, Thomas is uh, rolling around on the floor, he'll just do a, 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 a shop. Thomas, put yourself together. We're leaving. Thomas stands up, <laughs> dusts down his jacket, blood everywhere. One last look at Cosgrove and Hawthorne and the party disappearing off and will follow the family. Uh, Charlotte turns her head back as they're leaving just to look at Emily and kind of gives her uh, a slight look of confusion and bewilderment, not knowing what is going on and, and just kind of says, I'll see you again soon, Emily. By this point, Emily has put her rabbit's mask back on and as you say, yeah, I'll see you again, Emily. Um, she just kind of stands there in the middle of this collective pool of blood surrounded by all these bodies that you seem to be leaving behind. And you can see the servants are coming in now and they are uh, taking bodies from different areas and dragging them across the dance floor over to the garden's door. And she just stands there with her mask back on. And she simply just raises her hand, the hand that's had the symbol carved into it by her father, and she just waves ever so gently. And you just see her rabbit's mask with her mouth beneath smiling as she waves as you leave. Charlotte Thomas Reverend, where are you going? Prideau Manor. Well, no. Once we are outside, I'd like to hustle up to the other two and... I'd like to actually explain what I saw with Jenkins. Because I don't know whether the Reverend or Charlotte have come across these lobotomized fishmen before, but I know that I have. And I know who was there at the time. And I'm going to tell them that, Uncle, Miss Lambert, I've seen those things before. My enforced separation from the family with Jenkins... He had one on a table. He was inserting these metal sticks into its brain. I I would... I'd wager anything that Jenkins is behind this. And with Anastasia gone, Jenkins threatened to marry Anastasia. Jenkins is has been pursuing my sister all this time. And I don't know how Hawthorne or Dunn or even Cosgrove have got tied up in this. But this is Jenkins' is doing. Please tell me that we can sort this. We'll find her. We will. I well, promise. I, I know how we can get to him. I don't think we can, but I know how. There is a, a tunnel in the lake. It it leads to his lair. I, I swam it. I, I can't tell you how I managed to survive it. And I don't think I have the strength to do it now. But if we could get through that tunnel, we could find where he is. Very well. Let us get back in the carriage and make our way back to Prado Manor. I don't know about the two of you, but I could do with a bit of a bath after tonight. And he's going to look up at his footman and uh, his entourage and say, uh, you, you, You'll forgive me, uh, you're Adrian, you are. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, it's sorry. Callum, sir. Douglas. Callum, sir. Uh, did, did, didn't we, aren't we missing Mr. Burroughs? Didn't, did, didn't, didn't he come, come, come back? I, I believe he was, uh, I, he was going to fetch something. Oh, that's right. Yes, he was going to fetch something for me. Uh, does, does he have it? He kind of perks up. Uh, Adrian leans forward. Uh, um, sir, um, Mr. Burroughs, 
he said he said he had to go off and do something. Maybe this thing that you're asking about that he went and go and get. Uh, All right. But um, he, he ain't come back, sir. Oh, that's very disappointing. Oh well, I, th I think I shall have to go and look. look at um, <laughs> listen, chaps. Um, I don't know whether you heard any anything uh, going on. Uh, we didn't hear before. nothing, sir. We didn't hear nothing. No, not a thing, sir. Excellent. Excellent. Would you mind taking us back to Predo Manor, uh, to Grace Hates? And uh, are, are the fires still on at this time of night? I, I believe we, all three of us could do with a, a hot bath. I, indeed, sir. We'll, we'll make it happen as soon as we get there. Um, Callum has already, uh, Mr. Douglas has already begun putting the steps to the carriage out so you can just walk straight up into the carriage uh, and then steps off, door closed. They can see that you are uh, the three of you um, Miss Lambert, Thomas Prideau, and Reverend George. They can see that you are all, well, partied out, I think would be the uh, the appropriate term here. And Thomas seems to have slipped in some red wine a number of times, which is, you know, not beyond his reputation. Uh, so um, you can hear them jumping up onto the carriage. Uh, you can hear them riding off. I'm going to ask you three at this point to give me a spot hidden things are changing mm. that is a 97 over 50 not a fumble but it's not good <laughs> also a fail from me 65 against 44 well i think it's only fair to say that thomas might be here um d d just kind of like you know trying to squeegee some of the blood out of his tails or some such thing uh, and perhaps miss Stamber, you are distracted by this because as you said your beautiful blue dress has uh, gathered a certain substance around its tail end, and uh, it's a bit of a distraction, seeing Thomas do this in such a wanton way. Um, but the Reverend, can I ask what you rolled, please? Certainly, the Reverend, that was a success. 38 versus 43. The Reverend is gazing out of the window or wherever he needs to be looking at the moment. Reverend. As you are in the carriage and you begin leaving Dun Manor, you can see that there is a fundamental change to this wonderful town that you call Kingscombe. The town seems to now be bathed in this red mist, floating from door to door, possessing every street, linking every road and every important place of power. This red mist is very familiar to you. It seems, shall we say, slightly more transparent, but it is the same mist that you have encountered, and it now lies in the stomach of Kingscombe, sitting at the beach on this, uh, almost within this valley. We know that the manor houses overlooking Kingscombe are of risen ground. You see this mist swirling among the streets. An omen. But with your success, you can't help looking to the point where you played Pall Mall earlier today. Apart from this red mist, the only significant thing you see on this outstretched beach, which you know rather well now, is a shipwreck. There is a shipwreck. A significantly large shipwreck now on the beach and it wasn't there this morning the reverend will look out at the red mist and be reminded of the seventh plague of egypt wondering whether or not death is coming for him tonight whether he needs to quickly nip out and slaughter a lamb and daub it on doors but this isn't the biblical times this is modern times and he needs to get a grip of himself. Although he is quite surprised at the new being flippant tourist attraction that has appeared in Kingscombe. Does he catch sight of any kind of identify masks at uh, marks? He asks the keeper, perhaps knowingly, bearing in mind our connection with the Navy and a certain ship. Can you see it in this light? Is anything reflected? That was only a basic success, not a hard or extreme. I'm afraid on a regular success, you can see the shipwreck and you can see Fine. the mist, which is now, uh, it's not overbearing the town. It's almost dropped to a low level that it's within the streets as opposed to over the town itself. You see the ship now uh, almost um, breached 
upon that beach. It is a shipwreck upon the beach where this morning there was no shipwreck. Well, at least he'll know where to point his telescope once he gets home then. He, he'll actually look down at his hand and uh, maybe remove the handkerchief and see whether or not uh, his hand has stopped a bleed and maybe look at the uh, handkerchief as well. You see that your hand has stopped bleeding. In fact, all of your hands have stopped bleeding, whether you're looking or not. And it's rather significant to recognise that the symbol is incredibly clear. Beyond a pale of a doubt, you recognise the symbol that is on your hand. And as you're looking at your hand, you're looking at that symbol, and you're thinking about everything that's happened from Chambers' death up to now. The carriage whinnies. The carriage stops. And time must have passed you by because you find yourself outside of Prido Manor. What's bizarre is that Miss Foster, one of the servants, has come running up to the carriage and she's holding something in her hands, a, 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 a package of some sort. Uh, Be Becky, isn't it? Miss, Miss, Miss Foster? Yes, my lord, yes, yes. Um, I, I'm so sorry to run out to you like this, but um, this was delivered and, and I was told that it was a, a matter of life and death. And she just holds it out to you up to the window that you're in in the carriage. He will scoop it up through the window and uh, then, almost without waiting, go to open the door and then realise, no, there is a reason why there are servants, because there's a big drop on the other side. So uh, he, he'll... Uh, say, uh, stairs, stairs, please, stairs. Are you here, Mr Douglas, running down? Clonk, clonk. <coughs> stairs on. Door open. Uh, uh, Marvellous. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, Miss Fos Foster... Thank you ever so much for bringing, bringing this uh, to me. Perhaps you might go, go on ahead and, and light the candles uh, in my room. But I, I must tell you, unfortunately, Miss Anastasia won't be home tonight, so there's no need to make up her room. Um, but Reverend, I was told, quite frightfully, that that was a matter of life and death. Uh, very well. Um, the, the Reverend will uh, open it and look... Uh, over at uh, Thomas, who is hopefully uh, getting down, and he might whisper to him, Jenkins, as he opens up the um, package, whatever it is. You have definitely piqued Thomas's attention, and while helping Charlotte down, he will lean over your shoulder to see what. I can imagine the two of you standing over the Reverend's shoulder as he opens this package, and you realise this isn't something that's from Mr Jenkins. It's another package that the Reverend was expecting. You open the package and find the diary of Second Lieutenant Lord Matthew Prido. Thank you for joining us for Cult and Culpability. Remember, you can find us at www.miskatonicplayhouse.com and you can also visit the main stage for other scenarios from the Miskatonic Playhouse with links in the show notes below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and support us on Coffee. That's ko-fi.com forward slash Miskatonic Playhouse, where you can access exclusive shows and content for as little as one pound. But if you can spare a minute to leave a review, it makes a huge difference to other like-minded listeners who will be able to find and enjoy our work. Until next time, when the curtain rises again. <laughs>